Hey there, beloved saints. Um, yeah. It is so loud out here on my back porch. I can't hear myself think. So, I'm hoping uh, you'll be able to hear me. But it was rainy and stormy today. And it it's a nice, like, warm, almost summer night. So I wanted, I was cleaning up a little bit out here and uh, I'd taken most of the day off to, you know, get some personal things done. And if you guys know, I work constantly, like ridiculously with this ministry and um, I get worn out, but it is, it is my heart, it is my passion. And uh, I spend a lot of time on the phone um, counseling people and I was, I was very honored that um, Brother Jordan you know, he's a manager of a bank, and uh, he just works himself to death. And he still is concerned for his viewers and asked me, because he wasn't certain when he'd have time to get to it, if it, if I would go over First Timothy um, chapter 6, uh, verse 10, about uh, the love of money being the root of all evil, uh, for a viewer of his and he's just so sweet that way. So I want to go over this for him but uh, I also want to clarify something because I get this often and it is the misunderstanding that the Bible actually says money is the root of all evil. It doesn't say that. Money is neither good nor bad. It is just an exchange for goods and services. It's the love of money is the root of all evil. And what that means is not that every single sinful crime or a bad human attribute stems from the love of money or greed, but that greed can and has been the cause of every evil created by man. Now, for instance, thank you, crickets, encore, encore. I do. I, I, I'll wait for the encore later. Please don't start that back up. Um, bullfrogs and crickets out here. It's absolutely insane. I used to think there was geese. They were so loud. Uh, it, it, it is one of the main motivators for murder, for um, losing your ethics and morals, um, all kinds of things. So let's uh, look at it. And I think what's happening here is that Paul is instructing a young church leader uh, on things to look for in instructing the saints and to look out for certain men that claim to be Christians, but really are wolves that have the motive of uh, financial gain from the saints uh, because they are aware of our charity and our willingness to give uh, selflessly and people will take advantage of that and and not really be a need or say it's for a need and and just be a wolf and to benefit themselves um, and that there are some that are uh, insincere claiming to be in the faith for greed's purposes as well as false prophets that can show up saying that they are leaders and they are not. They are doing it for what they can gain. I'm kind of sick of it. Okay. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. So you'll also have those that want to come in and dispute things, as well as uh, the Greek philosophical things against the faith. 
So we're supposed to love one another and not get caught up in these in this strife. Now you notice when it's talking about this, it says that if a man teaches something other than the doctrine of Christ, okay, again with the Mosaic law, circumcision and that, or if it's some pagan stuff that's that's different than what Paul taught, or if there's a reason to not be loving and giving, hmm, that's against what the Lord said. Or if it's a plot of revenge, he teaches you revenge is okay. That's against the doctrine of our Lord. But the main doctrine is the gospel, that eternal life comes by God's grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus. But it does contain wholesome words, the words, words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how to love one another, give to the poor, and so forth. You know, very basic elemental doctrines of the faith. According to godliness, say so it is about how we're behaving as well. If he doesn't, then he's proud. And it says that they are supposing that gain is godliness. Now remember I said a lot of people thought if you were wealthy, it means you must really be godly because God is blessing you. That was a common belief. And unfortunately, with the prosperity gospel, it's a belief today as well. You just don't have enough faith. Maybe that's not God's will. I don't see where people just uh, prayed for money all the time for themselves. I see them asking the saints, even who were poor, to give what they had to help those starving in Jerusalem, though. But I don't see them pulling up to a mansion claiming it. This is, this is not, it's, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. It's that the love of money can cause a person to go astray. And here is the warning, okay? Because supposing gain is godliness, it deceives a lot of people thinking that. And when Jesus said it's hard for a rich man to enter heaven, the disciples like, well, then who could be saved, right? Because they got more blessing than everybody. That was the common thought. God must, they must be very righteous because God's blessing them. If you read the book of Job, his friends believed that too. You must have done something wrong. Not that bad things happen to good people sometimes and vice versa. It's a fallen world. Okay. But it says, listen to this. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. So they're not really believers. They come in claiming to be godly men. But they're supposing gain is godliness. Get away from them. Get away from them. But godliness with contentment is great gain. And that just means to have the attributes of Christ in us. And it, it, it describes it elsewhere. Patience, long-suffering. You know, we're supposed to bear one another's burdens, thus fulfilling the law of Christ. So to bear one another's burdens, and that may be financial, it may be emotional, to mourn with those that mourn, etc. So we are content with what we have now on a day-to-day -day basis, and we, and we have our real treasures in heaven, and we're going to be with the Lord. He provides everything we need, and to be content, no matter what our situation, if you're wealthy or not, it's like Paul said, he can be in jail or, or he can be free. He can have plenty or he can be in want. But he can do all things with, through Christ which strengtheneth him. So it's the same thing with us. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And if you notice a lot of the pagans like the Egyptians, they were buried with their stuff. That's why they were looting the graves. Old statues they even built boats for the dead. Huge boats. The Emperor of China had like hundreds of terracotta soldiers buried with him. Um, in India, they would kill the wife and slaves of the king. They would slaughter them. If the king died, you better hope not. And in some places, they burned the wife alive. So he could take her with him. It's really crazy some of the things that they thought. Okay. So, and it says, We brought nothing into the world. It's certain we carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich 
fall into temptation and a snare. Okay, so when it says they that will be rich, we got to understand this old language. It's saying those with the intent and the desire to become wealthy. And that is the goal. That is the focus. They are in trouble. And I know you guys have seen it in Hollywood. They'll do anything for fame. Anything. You know, how can somebody do that? Anything. And they think it's going to make them happy, and it doesn't. Because their eye is on one thing. And that's what it's saying. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now he is quoting the Old Testament there. I'm going to see if I can go find it somewhere in the Psalms. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can find that Psalms for you. Okay, so uh, there is something alluding to like this. If you go to Hebrews, it talks about how idolatry is the root of all evil. So it's greed. Greed is the worship of money. So it would be very similar. But if you go to Job 20, there's some similar language. I had some notes I put in my phone earlier when I was looking over it for him. And in Psalm 16, uh, also I had a note uh, in verse 4. It says, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer nor take up their names into my lips. So uh, it's being considered idolatry, but in Job uh, chapter 20, if you go down to 12, it says, The wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth. Yet his meat in his mouth is turned, it is the gall of asps within him. Here's what I want you to see. He has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of asps. The viper's tongue shall slay him. So you'll see words like this poison and being pierced through. Um, these kinds of words of the damage done through sin, what it does to us, how it corrupts us, and the ultimate destination, the end thereof are the ways of death. As always. So, if anybody that is, let's see how it worded it again, because I didn't want you to think that anybody that would be rich, like that becomes rich, that's not what it's saying. It's saying if anybody would become rich, as in if anybody's eye is focused on becoming wealthy and that is their goal in life, that is what's important to them, it's a bad sign. So, look. Uh, for the love of money is the root of all evil, while some coveted after have erred from the face and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Right before that, it says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation. So that just means those that desire wealth. That's their goal. Um, and you'll see that it's always death. It's always uh, going to lead to something bad. Why would it not lead people away from faith? See, when your focus is your riches here, instead of our real riches, the Lord, eternity, having a much more fulfilling life, doing what the Lord asked of us, um, we set ourselves up. We really do. And so he's saying, when you see these kinds of teachers sneak in, as well as if you see the brethren with this, uh, the symptoms of covetousness, like greed and and there's nothing wrong with having ambition. But if your goal in life is that, that is not a good sign. So it says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. Because remember, this is an instruction to a young man that's going to lead a church. 
So it's also a warning to Timothy himself to look out for things in himself to not fall this way. Okay? Don't be tempted. Because I believe that's what happened to the church. I believe they were tempted with power and wealth and a name. And that is how it got corrupt. It joined with the Roman Empire because it didn't work persecuting them. They were growing under horrible persecution. But the zeal and the fire went out when they became corrupt and they started bribing them and tempting them. You can see it. So, uh, so it tells him personally to flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. So it's just um, instructing Timothy that there's going to be a lot of uh, long teachers that are going to appear as sheep, but they really have the motivation of gain. And not just that, they've deceived themselves into thinking that is godliness. Because it misleads God's blessing you. That's what we need to be seeking out. So, uh, as well as for him to look out for it within himself, don't fall for these things, and to help his uh, the saints in his congregation, the men, the elders, teach it to them so they can teach the younger men and so forth, so that they can not fall into this trap as well. Okay, I, I, I hope um, it made sense. I know it was loud. I'm praying the audio comes out. All right, God bless you.